put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. But hey, if the video is just too long for you to watch, chances are I recorded a shorter version, and the link will be in the description box. It's not an inferior video, it's merely a Cliff's Notes version of this very video. The White and the Huntsman movie view. A queen pricks her finger and bleeds onto some snow, and she's so attracted by this contrast that she wishes she had a child with skin as white as snow, hair as dark as raven, and, you know, I forget which part is supposed to be red as blood, but anyway, so yeah, you can understand why they cast Kristen Stewart. And she soon after gets a child, and at first you're not entirely sure that that's going to grow up to be Kristen Stewart, because that baby is clearly smiling. You know, full on smile. Anyway. She dies the next winter because it's a really hard winter. I think in the original fairy tale she was like originally kind of weak in this, they don't really say that. Anyway, minor detail. And the king grieves right until he meets Charlize Theron and you can blame him. She tricks him using a, an army made entirely of glass. Well, got me too. And, yeah. I think her name is like Ra Ravenna? Ra I'm gonna go with Raven. Because that's obviously what it's trying to evoke. Queen Raven... <laughs> yeah, she becomes Queen Raven by marrying the king. And... She is so friggin' evil that nature... I think they say that nature turns against itself, which I don't know exactly how that works, but yeah, you know, she, she's she's scar evil. She, you know, is, is, we're we're talking withering of yeah everything. So and she you know kills the king and then has his castle taken over by her real army. And she locks up Snow White in a dress instead of killing her because... Anyway, Snow White wants to escape because there is a Duke, Duke Hammond, I think, who is still loyal to the king and who has a something of an army who, you know, she, she hopes that he can help retake the castle and, you know, reclaim the throne from the queen. And the queen, of course, has not defeated this army yet. You know, that again just kind of baffles me, but to be completely fair to the movie, those two points are really just about the only unexplained ones. Other than that, motivations and plot points work out quite well. To sum up this movie, you know, to just, before I even really get into it, three words. Great summer blockbuster. Is that four words? Anyway, I should talk a little bit about the, the thing that we were all fearing with the casting. Kristen Stewart. She's not Bella in this movie, thank goodness. She, she, she smiles in this movie. She, she laughs. You know what else she does? Acts! I know, I, I had forgotten that she could do it too. I, I actually sort of wonder if she had forgotten that she could do it too. And, you know, Chris Hemsworth also not at all playing like Thor, you know, which is... That wouldn't really be bad, but I'm glad that he's doing, you know, something else. 
and yeah, in general, the, the characters are actually quite enjoyable, and their, you know, various relationships, yes, there are two, you know, male protagonists, but it's not a love triangle, there's only one of them who's in the, there's actually, it's actually kind of a funny exchange, there's this bit where Snow White very briefly wonders if the huntsman wants to have sex with her, and he kind of shoots her down. It, I'm not going to blow the line, but it's it's pretty funny. That actually... Yeah, I should talk a little bit about the characters before I get into that, but yeah. She... You'll want her to succeed, you know? She's a really likable female protagonist, you know? They're, and, and they do a really good balancing act of... She's not weak. Definitely not weak. But she also isn't, like, infallible or completely, you know. So, yeah. It, it, I, I think it would feel fake. There, there are some movies set, it is like, like period pieces, where the woman, because of sort of, you know, overcompensating for the way that women have excuse me, women have been demeaning in movies, they make the woman extremely strong. I don't have a problem with that, but in the period piece, that does really seem odd, out of place, you know, it's just, yeah, that's, that's not the kind of movie for that, so they have to temper it. In this, they do, they do a great job, and this movie is bound to get some comments about, you know, oh, is Christmas Stewart really supposed to be harder than Charlize Theron? No, she is not. She is supposed to have an inner beauty that is greater than Charlize Theron's outer beauty. That's really the thing. And it's... I think they do it quite nicely. And she really does, you know, it's gonna... The film does go for you know, full on into hippie territory, frankly, but yeah, it, it really works. It feels really genuine, and you really believe that this, you know, young woman, I was about to say girl, but she really isn't, this young woman has so much freaking heart that she can take out this evil queen, you know, by virtue of that, you know. And, yeah, Chris Hemsworth, he's this self-destructive, drunk widower. He's, like, basically getting into fights and getting himself into trouble because he wants to die. He just, he lost his wife. He has nothing left to live for. And, yeah, so they, he has this kind of bitter kind of thing going. And, again, great balancing act. It doesn't go emo. It really... I never stopped caring about it. I, I never, like, said, okay, stop whining, you know, it's, it's really easy to get into that kind of, but they don't, they really do great. The dwarves are, you know, enjoyable, and they do something really great that I'm not sure has been done before. I think the technology wasn't there before. At least some of the dwarves, I'm not sure about all of them, but at least some of them, those are regular actors, at least the faces of regular actors, and they just look like, you know, I don't know, what's, what's politically correct by now, little people. I, I really, I don't mean any offense to anyone. Let's, I, I'm gonna, yes, I don't mean any offense to anyone, but I don't particularly care for political correctness, you know. Anyway. Yes, so, and, and the queen, and her brother, they enjoy shouting, especially shouting, get out. I, I don't know quite why, but yes, the, it's especially her that enjoys shouting. She actually has this, there's, it's, it's a film of great contrast, and one of the contrasts is that sometimes the queen is this kind of, you know, seductive, cold, very, it's just uh, kind of careful, and then sometimes she is just furious and shy. 
shouting and there were points where I really felt, okay, this is starting to get into scenery showing ter territory. But to be perfectly honest, she, she scared the living crap out of me when she raised her voice. Charlize Theron is not someone you want on your tail. She is seriously scary. And I, I didn't quite get to, of course, as the, as the trailers sort of give away. <laughs> not that it's a major, it's, it's revealed early on. She wants, you know, the, the heart of Snow White, again, in her beauty. And, you know, that's the one thing, her, her magic is slowly fading away. And, you know, she has this kind of vampire thing where she'll, like, I don't know, s suck the soul, I guess, out of someone else and get their youth by, I, I guess, mouth to mouth with distance between the mouths and, you know, then you get to see her O face. Oh, and yeah, she does the Cleopatra milk baths thing, thing in the movie as well. But anyway, yes, she is losing her power and the only way to get it, to, to get like infinite power is through the heart of Snow White, so I guess it was good things you didn't kill her. And yeah, you know, or this, that's what she says. <laughs> I think we've all been there, you know, just you're going, just one more pure of heart, heart, that's all I need. And in reality, it's never like that. This is a great kind of somewhat modern take, in part modern take on the fairy tale, but also just very much. It, it stays true to the fairy tale in a lot of ways. <laughs> I'd say what, what it really does add, especially, is action scenes. It's, it's a pretty action-packed movie. Excuse me. And that's the thing. There, there are a lot of different elements here, and the film definitely goes for the entire gamut of human emotion, that entire spectrum. And here's the thing, most of the time, it actually works. It really gets there, you know. It's, it's sad, it's scary, it's cute, it's funny. Not sure it ever really is particularly romantic, but yeah. Yeah, the romance actually is one of the few things that are just, you know, particularly care about it, but it's not that big a part of the movie, to be frank. But yeah, and, and it's, and it is genuinely emotionally engaging. You really get into this, this world, and there's this great, they talk a little bit, you hear in the trailer about the dark forest, you know, how, you know, Snow White is lost in the dark forest, and that's why the huntsman has to be the one to go get her. Not everyone has been to the white forest, black forest. Dark Forest, and certainly not everyone has come back from the Dark Forest. And the Dark Forest is one of the scariest places you will ever see in film. I don't even know how... It basically, the thing I said earlier about how you know, nature has turned against itself, that's what you see in the Dark Forest. It is a creepy-ass place. There are like branches suddenly turn into snakes, and there are rotting animals, and bugs and it, yeah it's, it's really nasty I don't remember what the rating is on this movie but I'm guessing it's like an R I, I can't say I, I can barely imagine they got away with this on PG-13 and you know then on the other yeah contrasting that you also have a really beautiful and very vivid, very, very alive forest at one point, and yeah, just... The effects are excellent, I... There, there's really no point where you can tell where, like, you know, physical reality ends and CGI takes over. The... The dialogue is a little hit and miss. There are a couple of points where basically everyone speaks in Old English. You know, and Hemsworth even goes for an accent. I'm pretty sure he's like the only one. And then there are a couple of 
characters who like occasionally talk in a very modern way, like not not like huge, not like a pop culture reference, but they'll like use a saying that we maybe use today, you know, and it just really comes out of left field, and yeah, that that's a slightly uneven aspect of the film. It's it's a lot of fun. It's a very engaging movie. It's I'm pretty sure the movie pretty much exactly clocks in at like two hours, and you don't really feel it doesn't feel long. You know, it it doesn't. You know, it's it's not the you you can maybe sort of tell that it was two hours, but it's not like you were bored during pretty much any part of it. The but but yes, the, it it does pretty much fit in every element of the original fairy tale, although a few of them have been altered somewhat, and a few of them aren't quite included, but it also it's a it's got some really badass moments to it. There are, there are a lot of memorable little scenes and details. I suppose that does more or less cover it. Yeah, I very positively surprised. I was just hoping it would be somewhat fun, but I should say the action is really well choreographed, and we get a few pretty yeah, quite quite impressive bats. Oh, and another thing I haven't mentioned: it's a pretty epic movie. I wasn't quite expecting, but yeah, again, befitting that it's a fairy tale, and yeah, I should maybe also say the. Mirror? It's not really a mirror, it's basically a curved gong. You know, basically it's a reflective surface and then it, you know, some of it melts out and becomes this cloak-wearing golden dude. And you know, he talks to the queen, but yeah. I don't know. That was a slightly weird design decision, but it's really one of the only ones that I disagree with, honestly. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.